All right, guys, in this example, what I want to do is highlight one of the mistakes students make with law of cosines. Now, we know that the law of sines brings in the ambiguous case, right? And that's usually where a lot of mistakes happen. And then once we get to the law of cosines, it's kind of like, ah, I just have a formula to follow. Easy, breezy, beautiful. Time to solve the equation. That's not really how it goes. But the point that I'm trying to make is that a lot of students, once they see a formula, they're like, well, I can just kind of plug and chug. I don't have to worry about the ambiguous case and I am good to go. And in this video, I am here to tell you that is absolutely false. We still Still have to be careful of the ambiguous case with the law of cosine, especially when we're dealing with a side angle side. So you can see in this example, I have A is 46 degrees, B is 6.77, and C is 18.13. First thing I always want to do is draw an oblique triangle to visually understand my triangle. So now you can see as I drew the triangle, and again, the shape of the triangle doesn't really matter. The main thing we wanna make sure we have is whatever if my angle A is, then my side length A is going to be the opposing side. And so you can see we have A, B, and C, and we have all the opposing side lengths filled in correctly. So I recognize this to be a side angle side. So for therefore, I know that I can use the law of cosines to go ahead and solve for my A. And yes, given this information, we can just plug and chug into the law of cosines to be able to find the value of A. So here is the law of cosines. Again, the A, B, and C guys are all in interchangeable. So it doesn't really matter if you're solving for A or solving for B or C. You can always just rearrange them. But anyways, you can see we have side length C, we have side length B, and we have the angle of A. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug them in and then solve for A. Now I am going to be using my graphing calculator and I will store the image. So I'm only going to round it to the nearest hundredth, but I am going to store the image in my calculator. Okay. So now what I did is I just rounded to the nearest hundredth and I have now stored A. So we have A here, which is going to be a 14.28, which based on this triangle kind of makes sense. Now it's important to think when I did type this into my calculator. We were solving for A, not A squared. So that's why I took the square root on both sides just to get the A by itself. And then basically this follows the order of operations. So I just basically plug this all into my graphing calculator to go ahead and simplify. You can definitely do this one by one. Just be very careful with how you're typing everything in to follow the order of operations. So now that I have sign like A, I want you to recognize something. I now have a ratio, right? Which means I can now use the law of signs because again, remember we have to be able to find these missing angles. So I have to be able to find these missing angles B and C. I only need to find one of them and then I can subtract my two angles from 180 to find the third missing one. So this mistake students usually make in this case is they go ahead and follow the law of science because typically the law of science is going to be the quicker, faster, easier method in this case. But if you kind of recognize something, if I wanted to find, let's say angle B next, we already know now what sine length A is right? So technically forgetting about this B here, technically, if I'm just going to solve for B, I have a angle side side, which again should bring up the alarm bells of and the ambiguous case. So you have to be very careful because you might have two or an acute angle that you are dealing with. Let's go ahead and apply the law of signs. Let's go ahead and do this. And we can see how this is actually going to give us our incorrect answer. Now, a way to avoid that is to simply just use the law of cosines again. And again, remember, we only need to do this one more time. All we need to do is find one more angle, and then I can just subtract both my angles from 180. So let's go and do this the correct way. And then I'll show you if you went to a law of signs, how you would have got the answer incorrectly. Now, all I did was really just write this original formula, solve for cosine of A. This is just another rewritten way that we like to write the law of cosine. But the nice thing about this form is my cosine of A is going to be isolated. Now, in this case, I'm not trying to solve for A. All I'm trying to actually solve for is going to be C. So all I'm going to do is swap out the angles. So now I can go ahead and solve for C. And that's basically all we need to do. If we needed to solve for B, we could do the exact same thing, just again, swapping everything out. So now let's go ahead and solve for C. Now again, remember to undo the cosine of C, I'm going to take the cosine inverse. So now all I simply need to do is go ahead and plug them in and evaluate using my calculator. And again, I am going to store this answer. So you can see 114.06 is going to be your answer. So this is actually not a good accurate drawing of the triangle. This is actually going to be an obtuse oblique triangle. And what's really important about this is if we were to use the law of signs, we would not have gotten this answer. Let's go ahead and find our final angle B here just to go ahead and solve this triangle. And then let me show you what would happen if we would have done our mistake and immediately jumped to the law of signs. So all I'm going to do is going to take 180 degrees minus 46 and minus my now stored angle C. Don't want to use the rounded version to go ahead and find my B. Okay. And now we can see that angle B is going to be 19.93. Now let's go back and see, well, what if we wanted to find angle C, right? Now, typically we recognize we have this relationship here, right? So I could say the sine of 46 degrees over the stored angle A is going to be equal to an 18.3 over the sine of C. So if I wanted to use the law of signs, what I could do is I could create this relationship and I could create a racial relationship over here. 
here. So what I would typically do is I would just write the sine of C over a 18.13 is equal to a sine of 46 degrees all over again remember that stored answer a so again typically a lot of students will just jump to this because they're like well why do the law of cosines again why go through all of this work right when i can just use the law of sines it's much easier and again when we recognize this here we have a sine of c is equal now to a 18.13 times a sine of 46 degrees all over my stored answer a so therefore i have c is equal to the sine inverse here of going to be a 18.13 times a sine of 46 degrees divided by my stored answer a now let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator and see exactly what we get and therefore we get a 65.93 but notice that is not my angle c that i got over here right so which one is correct well this one is correct so that's why this is a mistake the law of cosines is going to give you the correct angle every single time the law of sines on when you have the ambiguous case we don't know if it's going to be obtuse or if it's going to be acute that's why we have that ambiguous case we don't have enough information as that's going to be. So the best thing I can recommend to you, don't make the mistake when you have a side angle side, go ahead and just use the law of cosines twice and then subtract the two angles from 180 to find your third missing angle. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you want more examples, check out the playlist and resources I have down below or check out the next video I have for you here.